Hi, kitty cats. Today on the program, I want to talk about how I finally launched uh, the new website that I've talked about now for about a month. I also want to talk about this short video that I made that got a ton of views and uh, quite a few hate comments. And then finally, I want to talk about role playing. <sighs> Probably not what you're thinking. All this and so much more on the Dingbat Diaries Weekly for the week of August 18th, 2023. I am Amethyst Deherrick, your host is for the program. All of my work is supported by subscribers to our website, Gender Identity Today. If you like this content, the website is linked in the show notes. It's also genderidentitytoday.com. When you subscribe, all subscribers receive emails when I and other contributors to the website publish new content. You're also able to interact with us directly through the uh, comments on, on uh, any of the articles. And then depending upon your level of subscription, you'll have access to a private Discord server as well as private monthly events. So, speaking of this new website, the new website, as I said, is called Gender Identity Today. You can find it, find it um, linked in the show notes. The intent for it is to be a place for my work, but then a place for others to discuss identity and gender theory. Now, I began this project for a few reasons that I'd kind of like to explain, because um, I've recently published a couple of articles on both Medium and Substack, where I tend to publish most of my work, um, but both of those are outside my control. I learned this lesson pretty forcefully this year because Medium has changed how they operate. Um, I've spoken about that over the past few weeks. I've written about it on Medium. I, you know, I've talked about it on other videos. I'm not even gonna bother trying to recapitulate all of that now. But that was part of what spurred me to, to do this project, was that I have no control over Medium or Substack. On a more personal level, neither platform really allows me to collaborate uh, with others very well. And kind of a bigger point, neither allows me to embed any source, which is a shame. That's a big limitation because there's a lot of content that I'd love to share that I cannot because neither platform does it very well. And finally, at the end of the day, I still end up having to promote myself. If, if Medium is not promoting me particularly well, I have to promote myself and I'm gonna, and if I'm going to promote myself, I would actually rather promote myself than Medium or Substack. I have loved both of those platforms and I don't intend to leave them completely, but I will say this, this, is, a, this is a major uh, motivating factor for me, uh, the, the need to promote myself. There are also a few professional, professional reasons. My research in terms of gender theory like I've discovered, a <laughs> discovered, I've found a, comp a fairly big lack in terms of gender theory. Now I'm gonna clarify this, okay, in a moment. Um, what, I, what I find out there, there seems to be very little. And I think that contributes to a lack of understanding about identity and gender in the general public, which says to me, and I've observed this now, you know, relatively, um, it's been almost forcible here too to find that identity and gender are really kind of misunderstood. You know, the general public doesn't understand the role that identity and gender play in kind of typical human life. The, the understanding is, is that it's pretty obscure. Um, or my, my, my uh, observation is that uh, typical humans are, see, see gender and identity as kind of, you know, opaque concepts not really worth uh, investigating. But to be totally clear on this, when I say gender theory, I don't mean gender studies. Gender studies is very common, and I think for very good reasons. Going back to the, the point that the role that identity and gender play in, in the typical human experience being obscure, when something is obscure, we want to study it. We should study it for that matter. It deserves to be studied because gender and identity are critical 
to mental health. And so we need to, to study these things. But when I say theory, in particular, the word theory, I use that from a scientist's kind of standpoint. Now, remember, my background is chemistry, all right? A theory in science is something that explains why something occurs, why an event occurs, not that it occurred. And, and that's an important distinction. There are, there are two primary theories that I've found so far in gender theory. The first is, is the, the kind of the current anti-LGBTQ rhetoric, which is just that genetics is gender. Genetics is sexuality, for that matter. This is something that's demonstrably, demonstrably false, like pretty obvious just to say, well, but look, I've got genetics and my gender and or sexuality is different from what, you know, is considered the normal cishet experience. But the other primary theory that I've found is that gender is performance. And so this is Judith Butler's work, which at least to me feels incomplete. I recognize I tread on a minefield when I say this. Um, and what I'd love is uh, some feedback. I certainly welcome the feedback on that. In fact, if you would like to write an article, this is why I worked really hard and launched this new site, Gender Identity Today, this past Tuesday, the 15th of August, 2023. Um, collaborations and guest articles are in the works. Could be even yours, if you want to disagree with me, because I'd love to publish things that disagree with me. Because the more that we talk about identity, the more we talk about gender, the more we realize it is a normal part of the human experience. I'm also putting together a Discord server uh, that I had mentioned, and then I'm kind of tr I'm trying to develop some kind of monthly event. I got to tell you, I'm little fuzzy on where that goes. If you have an idea, please feel free to leave a comment because it could probably be very helpful. So that is gender identity today. That's that was my big news for the week, having completed that. An Instagram video. This was very interesting. I put out a short video. I, I posted it both on YouTube and on Instagram. I will link it in the show notes as well. On Instagram, it was viewed far more than anything that I'd ever put out before. 13,000 views is what it, what it got. I don't know that I'd call that viral. Maybe it's bacterial. It's like a fungus. I don't know but 13,000 views. Why did it get so many views? The video was about gender affirming care and how it works. I mean, that it works, how about if I say that? If you disagree with me at this point that gender affirming care is efficacious, I'm gonna guess you've ever needed it. I'm gonna guess you've never needed it. Hope I said that right. Gender affirming care helped me. It helped my friends. I think many of us, me or my friends would be dead now without gender affirming care. And I suspect that is part of the reason some people would like to restrict it. If we don't get it, and if that means we kill ourselves, maybe they think they've gotten rid of a problem. Unfortunately, it just kind of doesn't work that way. This is not part of aberrant behavior, aberrant genetics, it's part of the normal human experience. So I bring this video up because I got quite a few hateful comments on it. I think on Instagram, I got something like 50, which is a shame. And on YouTube, I think I got about 15. So all told, we're talking, you know, 60 comments of hate directed at me, my mental health, uh, my delusional nature, all kinds of great things. I considered deleting these comments, but as I read through them, which I did because I wanted to see if I could, you know, if I found uh, positive comments, which I did, incidentally, there were positive comments and I wanted to scroll through them all because I wanted to highlight comments that were positive. You know, I wanted to, to like those, give them a little heart, maybe reply if, if uh, you know, there was a reason to. So looking through those comments, I was surprised to find they didn't hurt me. 
and and I I'm very surprised by that. I guess I'll just say I'm very surprised. I think if I had received these comments even a year ago, it would have been very hurtful, but they're not now. I have a theory on that, and actually it kind of comes up in, in the next little segment that I'm going to talk about, but I considered deleting them, and since they didn't hurt, I thought, why bother? And then it struck me. If I leave them up, and I continue moving forward, I can show my peers that I have a lot of strength. And conversely, if I leave them up and continue moving forward, I can show my detractors I have a whole lot of strength. Now, don't misunderstand me. I don't really want these hateful comments. I would love it if we all understood gender is not a funky thing, that gender is not genetics. But until we all do, that's why I have to keep doing my work. So, I have spent a lot of time promoting the message that most people don't care about uh, me being transgender, or anybody being transgender. For the most part, I've gotten a lot of love. I mean, when I go out in public, sometimes I will meet somebody and I'll say, yeah, well, I transitioned gender in 2022, and I'll get a, oh, congratulations. People, women have given me hugs. There are men who have gone, wow, you know, you're very brave. So the response to this short video, I admit, was a little surprising. I haven't received that kind of hate, at least at that volume. I also haven't talked to 13,000 people in about 24 hours either, so maybe that surprise should not be there. But I want to finish this, this segment of the program by saying there were still more likes than hateful comments. Most people, when they don't like something, they're willing to tell you. Most people, when they do, they're not. Because you got to go out on a limb and say, I support this. Whereas not supporting something, generally you get other people who are, are willing to jump in. And if you like it, something, you know, like something that is controversial, you're throwing your weight behind it that, you know, puts you in my boat. And a lot of people don't want to do that, which I understand. But there are more likes than hateful comments. And I just want to say, think about that. My transgender brothers and sisters, my non-binary uh, friends, think about that. Despite the fact that I got a ton of hateful comments, I also got a lot of love. I got more love. So thank you, society, for proving me partly wrong, but proving me partly right. All right, the last thing that I want to talk about is role-playing and identity. Role-playing games in particular are something that I've thought about for a while. I mean, first of all, I love uh, role-playing video games. I don't know how many hours I lost Tomorrowind, the Elder Scrolls game, like 20, yeah, 20 years ago, I guess. I don't know how many hours I, la I lost to that. And then to Skyrim, the Elder Scrolls Skyrim, but it was a whole lot. Because I like role-playing games, I started a Discord server last year, and I'll, I'll link to that in the show notes as well, because um, what I, what I, part of my goal in starting this Discord server was in the hopes of being able to start a Dungeons & Dragons game, if you can believe it. So I realized that sounds kind of dorky, playing D&D, but from what I understand, D&D is cool now. Somebody cool told me, so I think that's proof, really. But I wanted to do it because I wanted to force myself to be seen by others. I wanted to, I mean, in particular, to be seen. I wanted to be on a video screen being seen by others. But it was also about working on my voice, whether it's my feminine voice or just trying to, trying to, to work other aspects of my vocal tract you know, just to gain more control over it. So those were my purposes in starting a D&D &D game. There was a blog post that I read by a guy named Mike Shea. Um, he's a Mike Sly Flourish Shea. Maybe some of you know him. I've listened to the guy's podcast for, you know, years. Mike, if you're out there, thanks, man. Appreciate that. 
he has a blog post titled Playing D&D Can Save Your Life. And, and that's, that's going to be linked in the show notes as well. If you read this, and it's a good blog post, I got, you know, it's a great, a great analysis of how playing role-playing games, uh, you know, can, can affect mental health, can help somebody's mental health improve. The result of the study, and, and Mike uh, Shea sort of comes to the same conclusion, is role-playing games have social benefits, that, that we, we get together with friends, and getting together with friends makes us happy because we get interaction and attention from people that we care about. And I think that there's something to that. I mean, I don't think that's wrong, but when I think about it from the angle of my own work, identity, and especially gender, requires kind of like trying on. You need to go into a, a, a changing room and try on an identity or a gender to determine how well it works for you. Because gender, their identity in general, um, has aspects of presentation, aspects of thought and emotion, so cognition, and aspects of behavior. Take a sip of water. So being able to role play somebody completely different from who you are <coughs> is a form of exploring identity because you get the chance to, to try something on. You can, you can be somebody totally different from who you are. That could be even a different gender, a totally different presentation, a totally different height, totally different weight, whatever. It's a way of exploring your own identity because you're trying on presentation, cognition, and behavior. I think role-playing becomes telling a story, a new story, about ourselves. We're telling the story of how we would act if we were the character. If we were that character in that situation, we're telling the, that story and in, and in a way being that identity. So I think, I think that, that the ability to try on, uh, you know, to, to go into the changing room and try on being a, you know, a halfling rogue I'm really struggling to find a good, you know, D&D character here. How about a half-elf paladin from, you know, Ravenloft? I believe the benefits in mental health, they come from learning to accept aspects of ourselves. Um, we can build a personality that maybe we might not typically choose. And when I say choose, I mean that we wouldn't choose it out of fear for society, uh, fear of disapproval from society, gender dysphoria, but in general disapproval from the social environment. And to go back to my theory of gender, that gender as a process of mediation, negotiation between who we know we are and our social environment, I think role playing makes a lot of sense. It's a way of trying on that negotiation. You're negotiating, but you're really negotiating in a cell in, in a safe place. And that's I think that's a very important aspect of role playing. If I were to bring up Rollo May, the existentialist psychologist from the 1960s, he found that by exploring our identity, we feel better about ourselves. And interestingly, when we explore ourselves, we're better at letting other people explore themselves they should be able to explore themselves as well and accept themselves. So we accept ourselves, we accept others, we're happier, and the world is kind of just a better, happier place all around. So is getting together with friends healthy? Yeah, absolutely. But not, I believe, if your friends reinforce a role you wouldn't choose for yourself. I think in that case, it could be very unhealthy for you. But going and playing D&D &D with other friends who are willing to allow you to play whatever role you choose and own that completely, I can see that being amazingly healthy. I can see it making you healthier and happier 
because role-playing helps you try on identities and figure out who you are, which is kind of what we're supposed to do here in this human existence. So, that is it for the Dingbat Diaries Weekly for the week of August 18th, 2023. As I mentioned before, if you enjoyed this content, please like the video, or if you're listening to this on a podcast, like the audio, please subscribe to receive new content. And if you really love it, please go to genderidentitytoday.com and subscribe there. You can find it in the show notes. You can subscribe there and you can help me and everybody who contributes to Gender Identity Today continue this fight for identity and gender, the normal aspects of the human experience. With that, thank you. Talk to you next week. Bye.